So I thought I'd take us through how to we can quickly and easily build a micro blaze processor system within our within our article. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click create new project. Now this assumes that we have already installed the RT board board profile. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, there's a link at the bottom of this that shows you how to do that. And we're going to be using Vivado 2015.4 for this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a create a new project. As I said, we've got the RTL project there. We're not going to specify any sources at this point in time. When we select the device, we're actually going to select the board and we're going to select the RT board and click on next and then finish that. OK, so with our project open, the first thing we're going to do is create a new block diagram. And this new block diagram, I'll give it the name top level. And that will be opened very quickly. And you'll see that on the bottom we have a new tab here called board. Now this defines all the inputs and outputs that are contained within the RT board profile definition. And actually what's really cool about this is if we want to include one of these in our design, we can pick this up and we can drag it across onto our block diagram and it will create and it will add in the clock wizard as we as we, we we're going to need. Now to get our RT system up and running, we actually need to modify this slightly and we need to declare, declare two clocks. And the first one is at a 166.66 and the second one is at 200 megahertz. We also need to change the reset type from active high to active low. Okay, with that done, we have our clocking. We have our clocking system set up for the for the microblaze system that we're going to create. The next thing we're going to do is actually we want to run the microblaze system from uh, we want it to execute its profile program from the DDR SD RAM. So within the board definition and the program, there is a memory a Xilinx memory interface generator project, which means that when we pick up our DDR SD DDR3 SD RAM drag this onto our block diagram that it actually automatically creates the project for the MIG project for us and sets it up as we require. So this is a really good, this is really good, saves a lot of time and allows us to actually just very quickly and easily get our, get our system up and running. We do need to make one or two slight minor tweaks though when we when we when it is added. As you'll see, it's added in these two clock the two the two clocks, which we actually need to remove from the design and we need to collect our 166 megahertz clock out one to our system clock and then our 200 megahertz clock to to the reference clock. The rest of these will be added in as we move on. With that completed, we want to click on run connection automation and we want to connect the system reset to the uh, to the memory interface generator. So we click OK and that will run through. So this is just running through now as we speak. And you can see it's added the reset to the to the system reset. We also need to add that reset onto the onto the clock generator. So with with this in here, there, we we now need to add in our microblaze system. So we click on this. We type in micro microblaze. We add the microblaze into our system. And then we click on this block here, which is run block automation. And here's where we have some options that we can select. So we will go, for instance, we'll go for 32 kilobytes of local memory. We'll go for 32 kilobytes of uh, cache. We will have uh, debug only. We will enable the peripheral AXI port. This is very important when we want to talk about using uh, additional functions and features. And we will enable the interrupt controller. We also get the option to select the clock that we're going to be using. Now, the clock that we want to use in this case is the memory interface generator UI output clock, and we click on we click on that. So with all with all this connected, we click OK. It will run through. While it thinks a little while, it will. Uh, it will populate the design as we need it to do. 
Okay, so at this point I'm going to pop this out of the window, I'm going to maximize this and I'm going to fit it to the window. So we can see that we've got our microwave system here, we have the local memory here which has the, which has been added, which has the, uh, for both for data and instruction, local memory BRAM controllers and, and then a BRAM. We have the uh, AXI interrupt controller added with the concatenation block needed. We have the peripheral uh, AXI connection put in that's connected to the to the peripheral, and we have the we have the memory debug debug mox, debug module and the and the reset module all put in. Interestingly, what's not being connected at this point in time is the memory interface generator. So if we run memory connection and we click this one and these ones. We click OK and it should hopefully run through and automatically connect those into our design. OK, now we can see this is all this is all being added in. We have the memory interface connector is connected into a new AXI interconnect that connects the uh, AXI uh, cache and instruction data and instructions to the to the memory. So if we just redraw our diagram there, we get a much more sensible looking looking uh, looking image there. The next thing we want to do actually we want to be able to communicate with the outside world in this very simple very simple build. So if we click on here and we add in UART, add in the UART light. We want to run connection optimization on both the slave AXI port and the UR output. It will pick up the board interface parameter there and click on OK. And again, it will automatically run through and connect this into our design. With this in our design, the only thing we need to do then is connect in the, uh, is adjust the Concatenation, to, concatenation port to have one port for the interrupts, and we can connect the AXI interrupt to the AXI UART interrupt to this. Again, if we redraw this at this point in time, we get a much nicer looking uh, looking diagram. If we click on validate, We'll see that the design is uh, successful with no critical errors or warnings in this design. We can then minimize that back into our project. We can go to sources. If we click on uh, the block diagram, if we right click on that and we create, create HDL wrapper, this will create a VHDL top level netlist that will actually be synthesized. So we'll let Vivado manage this. Click OK there. You'll find now that our block diagram sits underneath the top, underneath the uh, top level VHDL structure, and that we have a new VHDL structure that describes what's within our top level structure. If we then click on generate bitstream, we can then generate generate the bitstream, and uh, it'll take a few it'll take a few minutes to take a few minutes to run. But once the project has run, we can quite easily go. We can quite easily open the uh, implemented design and export that to SDK, such that we can initially write our "Hello World" program for that.